Good evening, everybody. Thank you for that beautiful and generous introduction. Thank you, Mayor and Premier. Thank you, Ambassador Lyons, who's here. Thank you to Michael Levitt. Um, thank you to Simon Wiesenthal's incredible legacy. And thank you each and every one of you that is here this evening. I can't begin to tell you what an incredible sight this room is. I can't begin to tell you how much hope and how much spirit is in this room. What I would like to share with you is what I think probably I'm the only one that can share tonight. I'd like to share that exactly tonight, one month ago, in what seemed like just a regular reality, it was my best friend's birthday. And her kids made her a surprise birthday party. And her oldest son, Arye, who's not a big talker and was really raised like one of my own kids, her oldest son, Arye, surprised us all when he gave a 10-minute speech dedicated to his mom, thanking Debbie for who she was and all she made him and his siblings turn out to be. He thanked her for her spirit and he thanked her for the hope. He thanked her for giving him everything that he knew about his joy of life. And I wanna share with you that on the next night, Friday night, as you all may remember, was not only Erev Shabbat, it was Simchat Torah. And Simchat Torah is a holiday in which, by the time it made its way around the world, for thousands of years, Jews around the world had nothing. We had no sovereignty, we had no country, we had no defense forces, we had no temple, we had no Jerusalem. We had one thing to be joyful for, to be joyous of, to celebrate. We had a book, we had the Torah. And for thousands of years, that book kept our identity and our heritage and our memory and our rituals and our ancestry and our heritage. And it kept us as a people and we celebrated it. And on that Friday night, my best friend's son, who the night before, really out of character, spoke to his mom, did something else out of character. He came to synagogue and with my own children, all of whom are big, three of them are in the army and the youngest is 17, they decided to make sure that all the little kids in our synagogue realized how much we had to celebrate and what a book that Torah is. And Arya Ziering put on a talis on top of his head and he yelled out, and Arya means lion, in what sounded like a roar. He yelled out, Ivdu. Ivdu et Hashem besimcha. Worship. Worship our Lord with joy. And the joy of the night and the celebration of the book was infectious. And those are my last memories of my best friend's son, who was my children's best friend. Because on the next morning, when we awoke at 6.30 a.m., like the rest of the country, to a barrage of rockets, entering our own safe space, safe room in our home, and deciding that we would still go to synagogue because, as crazy as that sounds, we're sort of used to it. When we went to synagogue, there was a certain tension in the air. And we have Helen Mirren here with us, and I can't help but think, a tension that we hadn't felt since the Yom Kippur War. And slowly but surely, Kids, husbands, wives were called out of synagogue, came to say goodbye, came to give a kiss. And I turned to Debbie and I said, have you heard from the boys? Because she's got two sons. And she said, Arya told Tal, her youngest daughter, that he was going in. And none of us knew what was going on yet. There were thousands of rockets that was really just a front for what we know were the atrocities of October the 7th. And so one month ago, 
the world changed. 10-7, like 9-11, changed our world. Atrocities that Simon Wiesenthal was committed to bringing to justice, the kind of crimes against humanity that we cannot even begin to imagine. Too terrible to imagine, but not too terrible to have happened. And you know, the atrocities, the war crimes, the crimes against humanity of October 7th that changed our world, the murder, the burning, the rape, the mutilation, the abduction, 1,400 murdered, over 5,000 injured in body, thousands injured in soul, 242 abducted, babies ripped from their mother's arms, whole families burned in their homes. I share it, although I know you've all seen it, and that there are images that we cannot unsee, but I share it because one month has passed, and the very same lethal anti-Semitic hate that enabled the atrocities of October 7th have enabled the denial, the justification, the excusing, the support for, and the attack of Jews all over the world in the wake of the atrocities of October 7th. And so I came here in order to be able to convey the urgency of the time that we are at and to tell you that just as all of our children our the boots on the ground right now as we speak in Israel and the entire Israeli population is deployed. Let there be no mistake. There is an ongoing mo war. More than 9,000 rockets have been launched over the last month, each one a double war crime according to international law, launched at civilians in their beds from densely populated areas in Gaza because Hamas has no regard for human life not just our human life, but Palestinian human life, under which they hide, use as shields, use as weapons, use as sacrifice. And what I came to tell you, one month after that fateful day that has changed the world as we know it, is that we are all boots on the ground in the war that was waged on October 7th, not against the Jewish nation state to which Jews and indigenous people returned after thousands of years of exile and persecution. Not on the Jews that were targeted for their identity, and by the way, non-Jews that were targeted for being Israelis, dancing at a peace festival or dancing at synagogues. And not Jews all over the world that are now unfathomably the target in the wake of those atrocities, but indeed an attack on our shared humanity on our shared values of life and of liberty, on our shared civilization. And what I came here to tell you is not only that there is a sense of urgency because war is raging as we speak, but that in this incredible junction in history, we do have a country, a 75-year-old miracle to which Jews and indigenous people returned after thousands of years of exile and persecution. We do have independence and sovereignty, and we do have a defense force, and we do have each and every one of you. Allies from different faiths, from different places, from different geographies, from different political alliances that recognized this war is all of ours, that recognize that whereas Israel may be on the front lines and whereas Jews once again may be the bloody canary in the mine shaft, the mine shaft risks collapse and that involves each and every one of us. 
And I came here to tell you that not only am I relying on that Ali ship, not only do I know that there are friends in this room and people committed to the legacy of Simon Wiesenthal, but to the never again prospective commitment, understanding that never again is right now. Understanding that Holocaust education is the key to understanding and remembering the past so that we can identify the current threats, not only to Jews, not only to their nation state or to the Jew among the nations, but indeed to our shared civilization in order to be able to prevent atrocities, the likes of which we experienced on October 7th. And I came here to ask you to be the boots on the ground, to know that just as Aryeh Ziering did not ask questions, and just as we have buried more of our friends' children and more of our children's friends than we have even begun to process, know that sometimes in war, we lose friends, but that in this war, the unconventional war for public opinion of which you are the boots on the ground that creates a false moral equivalency between a genocidal terror organization that attacked and butchered and bludgeoned and raped and burned and between a democratic country which not only can but must defend its citizens. And in that for false moral equivalency, the empowerment of that genocidal terror leaves you at the forefront of the unconventional war for public opinion. To call out, to speak up with courage and with clarity, to know that there are front lines of this war that will enable the state of Israel in the existential state that it is in to defend itself, but it relies on you and that you have not only the ability but the responsibility to ensure that we can fight the conventional war on the front lines. And to tell you that the sense of unity that I know is in this room, and I know is in many spaces around this world that transcends real and perceived differences of faith and of politics and of geography, to tell you that that is the source of hope that has empowered me to be able to find the strength to be here this evening and to remind us all in the words of the late Rabbi Sachs who differentiated between optimism and hope as, and hope as follows. He said that optimism is the belief that everything will be okay. If anybody knows Hebrew, but hope is the belief that together we can make it okay. In that sense, optimism is a very passive virtue, whereas hope is a very active one. And it takes no courage at all to be an optimist, and a great deal of courage to have hope. And when I look at this room this evening, and when I think of Golda Meir's legacy that reminded us that it is better to be alive with a bad image than dead and pitied, I look at each one of you and say, we will need you in this war. You are the boots on the ground in the unconventional war that ensures that we will not be neither dead and, or, and pitied, nor alive, but with a bad image. It is a really tough thing to do, what I'm asking you, I know. But it gives me a great, great, sense of hope to know that there is moral clarity and courage, action and the ability to take and know that the moral clarity with which you can address and challenge will enable us together, united, to win this war on civilization. So thank you. Thank you for your commitment, and thank you for your dedication. Thank you for being here, and thank you for having the memory that we need so that we don't allow history to repeat itself.
remembering that anti-Zionism is the current mutation of that ever-mutating anti-Semitism that enabled the atrocities of the Holocaust, enabled the war crimes and atrocities of October 7, that we now have a definition, the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition, that we all must be utilizing if we are to identify and combat this strain of an ever-mutating hate, and to remember that Am Israel Chai, that the people of Israel live.